What you're looking at here is a KitchenAid Professional 600. We also have a Kenmore Elite. They're both six quart bowl lift stand mixers. And in today's video, we're going to be comparing the two and telling you which one's the better buy. Welcome to Trapped in the Kitchen. Professional 600 is 575 watt. That means I have no idea. Nothing up here. So let's take a closer look at the KitchenAid Professional 600. KitchenAid has been around for many decades making stand mixers just like this. This is their six quart bull lift model. It comes with all the standard attachments. You have a spiral dough hook, your flat beater, and your wire whisk. Now the flat beater and the dough hook, all of this is all burnished aluminum. It means you don't want to put it in the dishwasher, you want to hand wash it. Like all KitchenAids, you can get access to the drive shaft here. Now this is used for all kinds of attachments, from pasta makers, grain millers, citrus juicers. There's plenty of stuff that KitchenAid makes to, that you can attach to your mixer. One important thing about a bowl lift stand mixer is the ability to lift the bowl with just one hand. You don't want to have to be putting your stuff down all the time if you have something in your hand. It's nice to be able to do it with one hand and not have to worry about it. Now let's take a look at the Kenmore Elite. Now the Kenmore Elite has a bit of a different design. I think it's more modern. Like the KitchenAid, you can actually get access to the drive shaft here and it is compatible with all the KitchenAid attachments. Now, Kenmore does not make their own attachments. Basically, they made it compatible with the KitchenAid attachments so that you can use those. Now, it is not completely compatible with all attachments. The two stand mixers are not bowl compatible. This means that for the KitchenAid ice cream mixer, won't work with the Kenmore. Now, just like the KitchenAid, you get all the standard attachments. So you have a spiral dough hook, you have a flat beater, and you have a whisk. Now one difference is these are coated, not burnished aluminum. So these are going to be dishwasher safe. You can put them in the dishwasher. Also unlike the KitchenAid, the Kenmore comes with a 5 quart bowl. So you can use either the 6 quart bowl or the 5 quart bowl. So here's the side view of the Kenmore here. We notice here's the lifting mechanism. You can still do it with one hand, which is still nice. But it's a bit more clunkier, it feels more solid than it does on the KitchenAid. And I, and I like that. Now also, what you'll notice, if you get in real close here, you'll see there's a pulse option. Now if you put the mixer to pulse here, and then you push this button, you get a one and a half rotation pulse. Now also you can see there's that bowl light that comes on. It's a nice little feature, it gives you a little extra light to see what you're working on. And then here on the side we have a timer. Now this timer will start counting up when you turn on the mixer. So you can keep track of how long you've been mixing. Now this can also be used to count down. So if you need to knead something for four minutes, you can set this timer to four minutes, start kneading your dough, hit start, and in four minutes this will shut off. Now the power is pretty similar between these two mixers. As I said earlier, the KitchenAid is a 575 watt mixer and the Kenmore is a 600 watt mixer. Now, you know, you can have all the power in the world, but it's not really going to matter if it can't mix well. So let's see how well these two do. One difficult thing for any stand mixer is making bread. Now in here I've got seven cups of whole wheat flour along with, you know, all the rest of the bread making stuff. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put the Kenmore through its paces and see how it can do at kneading bread. <laughs> Now if you look closely here, you'll notice that the Kenmore isn't doing a very good job kneading this dough. It's kind of just created a pit in the middle and the whole ball of dough is just kind of getting rotated around it. If you also look at the bottom of the bowl, you'll notice there's a lot of stuff stuck on the bottom. We transferred the dough to the 5 quart bowl to see if maybe it was the larger bowl that was causing problems. We also added an extra cup of flour to see how well it could incorporate this extra cup into the dough. If 
you're wondering how well the Kenmore did, let me put it this way. We transferred everything into the KitchenAid so that it would actually get kneaded, and that last cup of flour would get incorporated. Well, that looks pretty bad for the Kenmore. It wasn't able to mix the dough properly. I mean, it's kind of a big deal, but maybe it'll redeem itself now. Uh, we've got 10 egg whites in uh, each of the six quart bowls, one for the KitchenAid, one for the Kenmore, and we're just gonna put them head to head, see which one can uh, bring these beautiful whites to stiff peaks faster. After two minutes, our KitchenAid had our egg whites whipped to stiff peaks. It was really quick work by the KitchenAid. These are looking pretty stiff, so I think these are done. Now let's see how long it takes the Kenmore to do it. After about 7 minutes, the Kenmore barely had the egg whites to stiff peaks. The Kenmore was just taking a lot more time than the kitchen egg. I hope you guys like cookies, because I'm about to make two batches of sugar cookies. Now, one thing I've noticed while using these bowls, the kitchen egg bowl is definitely heavier than the Kenmore bowl. Just something to know. Let's make some cookies. First part to our cookies is going to be creaming the butter, sugar, and shortening together. Let's see how these do. Oh dear, this can't be good. It's just kind of pushed everything out to the side. If you look down on the bottom of the bowl here, you can actually see some sugar that hasn't even been creamed into the mix. Let's see how the KitchenAid can handle some cookies. We can see here the KitchenAid's done a very thorough job. We don't have a pile of sugar in the bottom waiting to be mixed in. All in all, great job to the KitchenAid. But our cookies aren't done yet. We still have more ingredients to add. All right, well now we've added our dry ingredients, so let's uh, get this started and get the rest of our cookies made. Just push the sides down.
does not look good at all. When you're making something, you don't exactly want your bowl jumping out. It's not looking good for the Kenmore. Well, let's see how our KitchenAid here can handle the rest of that dough. got things together a whole lot faster than that Kenmore. Well, I gotta say, this KitchenAid is just one heck of a stand mixer. Well, there you have it, guys. We put both of these stand mixers through a bunch of everyday tasks, and you know what? The KitchenAid came on top every single time. Now, the Kenmore has nice features, you know, the timer, the bowl light, but it doesn't mean anything if it can't do its one important job right, and that's being a stand mixer. You know what? That's what KitchenAid's great at, and it showed. Thanks for watching Trapped in the Kitchen.